last time on Shadow Slave, Nephis came back. We talked. And then we asked Nephis to stay at our house. Um, but we will... We will trick the government and all the clans or whatever that Nephis and all of the cohort and the firekeepers are in the uh, <laughs> flame mansion. I don't know if it has a name, but the <laughs> her clan's um, mansion that she has. The firekeepers are there and will establish, like, will start up. Um, uh, HQ basically but we will keep Nephis at Sunny's house uh, for the time being to stall for some time to have her just not having to ask her questions and shit like that um, and then Nephis and Sunny had a friendly spar in uh, the dungeon <laughs> in, in Sunny's basement uh, and that was extremely interesting and very, uh, a very um, bonding type of moment. Uh, but they also found out that they can use, uh, like, that Sunny can put the shadows on Nephis without any issue, and that Nephis can, like, uh, power up Sunny with her. Abilities like it was some weird shit. It's like, oh, they can fucking power both of them because of shadow bond or whatever the fuck, or because he's her slave. I <laughs> some shit like that, basically. Um, and F definitely isn't wearing Sunny's clothes, yes, because then Sunny was like, oh shit, we've been up all night <laughs> sparring. I have to go to school because I am a teacher. And then Rain was like, oh my god, I saw on the news that Nephis is back. I have to go tell Sunny. Goes into the house. Nephis is there wearing Sunny's shirt. Extremely important. And Rain is like, holy shit, you're Nephis. And then Nephis immediately was like, hello, yes, I am your grand teacher. And Rain fucking loses her mind. And then Nephis asked Rain to put on the uh, movie. The Forgotten Shore movie <laughs> that Kai made <laughs> about uh, them all and their adventures. And the first thing Nephis did was facepalm, and that was the funniest shit ever. And that's where we are right now. Rain and Nephis on the couch watching the movie. I don't think Kai made it, just helped a bit. Yeah, 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 I mean, like, he was, a, uh, but he was, a, uh, he was mentioned, right? As, like, a producer, or at least, like, an uh, executive producer. I don't know what these things are called. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he was there. Like, he was uh, helping and, and stuff like that. And we also think that the... Um, it was probably Kai that was like, oh, yes, Caster and Nephis was totally in love. <laughs> or, yeah, because last time Kai also found out that Caster was evil and wanted to kill Nephis. And he was like, what? So he wasn't in love with her? Oops. <laughs> so, yeah, that happened as well. <sighs> Hello, someone. But you made this one. We uh, we had some fun last time. <laughs> we did so we did some jokes. Uh, it was all good, all good. But now we're ready to continue this awesomeness of a novel and see where we end up this time. So let's just go. Chapter 783, Captive Audience. Oh my god, are they actually going to continue watching the movie? I thought that that was going to be it, and now they're going to be like, okay, switching to Sunny or some shit. Projected onto the wall, a languid jade beauty with a slim waist and long eyelashes was traversing a labyrinth of crimson coral, her voluptuous figure barely covered by a flimsy seaweed attire. A teenage boy of about 13 years of age was scurrying along as he shouted, Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Sitting on the sofa near the real changing star, Rain felt like sinking into the earth. As the movie went by, her cheeks slowly turned bright red. The daughter of the immortal flame clan, on the contrary, became increasingly more deadpan and devoid of emotion. By now, her face was so still that it seemed paralyzed. Rain awkwardly cleared her throat. Um, come to think of it, the actress they shows does not look like you at all. You are much prettier. Nephis shifted and briefly glanced down, then said evenly, Thank you. After a while, she added, Why would they cast a child to play Sunny? What a strange decision. Only a complete fool could mistake him for a young boy. Rain let out a nervous laugh. It, yeah, yeah, definitely. She looked away in utter embarrassment and then forced out, And what is up with that stupid catchphrase? That does not sound like something Sunny would say at all. Changing star moved, suddenly becoming a little more lively. Oh, no, that actually happened. A lot. <laughs> Called out, yeah. She was like, you know what? No, this is actually 100% accurate and true. <laughs> the movie, meanwhile, continued. The three sleepers braved the wilderness of the Forgotten Shore and eventually reached the Dark City. The brief moment of liveliness passed, and instead, the changing stars seemed to grow more rigid and cold with each scene. Rain felt so uncomfortable that she could not bring herself to say anything. What kind of idiot directed that stupid movie? Right. Meanwhile, meanwhile, a handsome young man with broad shoulders and a noble bearing appeared on the screen. Rain glanced at Lady Nephis curiously, wondering how much of what was shown about her relationship with the heroic Han Lee caster was true, and how her apparent relationship with Sunny fit into it. Could it be that there had been an actual love triangle between them? Oh my fucking god. Sadly, she failed to glimpse anything from Changing Star's stoic face. The movie progressed, slowly reaching its culmination. On the wall, the masculine face of the actor playing Sir Castor radiated courage and passion. Holding the grief-stricken Jade Beauty by the hand, he looked her in the eyes and said with passion, Should I fall? Do not cry for me, my lady. My life does not matter, but yours does. Immortal flame must never be extinguished. As long as it burns, humanity still has hope. The dreamers of the Dark City have hope. As long as you live, I can face a thousand deaths with a triumphant smile. <laughs> okay, maybe this is where the fucking that they light the candles comes from. If it's from the movie, then fuck this shit. It's from fucking Caster. <laughs> That's so fucked. Rain shifted uncomfortably. Is it me or is it getting hot in here? Not a single muscle moved on Changing Star's face. She looked at the projection with a deadpan expression. Wait, does that mean that Rain likes Caster? Is that what she meant? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, except. <laughs> oh my god. I think they started doing it before the movie. <laughs> they better. They better have. Not a single muscle moved on Changing Star's face. She looked at the projection with a deadpan expression. The projection, however, suddenly stuttered. Rain frowned. Huh? In the next moment, she thought that she smelled smoke. Turning her is Nephis destroying the projector. Turning around, the teenage girl noticed a thin stream of it, of it rising from inside Sunny's expansive projector. That's strange. Rain opened her mouth to say something, but before she could, the projector suddenly exploded. Oh my God! Please tell me. That was Nephis, right? <laughs> she fucking, she's like, I can't take this shit. Fuck Cass, he sucks ass. <laughs> and he's just like, fucking. <laughs> she destroyed the projector. <laughs> oh. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful shit. Okay. After the movie was suddenly and violently interrupted, Rain only stayed for long enough to help Changing Star clean up the debris of the malfunctioned projector. Yeah, totally. 
Then she found an excuse, grabbed her backpack, and hurriedly left. Who knew what was going to explode next? <laughs> once the teenage girl was gone, Nephis was once again left alone in the empty house. She lingered for a bit, then went back into the guest bedroom and rummaged through Effie's closet. She had no clothes apart from the tracksuit that the academy had issued to her, which was soaked with sweat after the night she had spent with Sunny Underground. You know what? I bet. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> they were memories, of course. <laughs> but she had worn armor for the better part of the last three years. Putting on something mundane was strangely comforting. Leaving Sunny's shirt on, or oh, of course, she found a pair of gym shorts to match it. Sadly, other articles of Effie's clothing did not fit her too well. She was going to have to do some shopping soon. Considering such matters, again, felt very strange. Eventually, Nephis found herself back in the living room with nothing to do. She simply sat in silence for a while, for a while trying to deal with the disturbing, disturbing oddity of not being in danger. Then she shifted uncomfortably looked around and took out the state-of-the-art communicator the government provided to her. She stared at it for some time, then tentatively accessed the network. Oh my god. Please, is she gonna find Mongrel? I swear to god. Please. After a while, Neff found herself senselessly scrolling through popular clips. Here it is, please. A few minutes later, one video caught her attention. Please, please, please. A demonic figure in black armor and fearsome mask stood in a small clearing in the middle of a thick forest, a long blade of an odashi resting on his shoulder. The swordsman's white hair moved slightly in the wind. Something about him seemed odd. Suddenly. Twelve figures appeared from behind the trees, surrounding the demonic swordsman. One of the ambushers spoke. Sorry, mongrel. No hard feelings, right? Nephi shook her head slightly and sighed. Twelve against one. The man in black armor, meanwhile, remained silent for a moment and then said calmly. None whatsoever. Already knowing how the fight would end, Neff moved her finger to scroll on, but then stopped. Something very unexpected was happening on the screen of her communicator. Instead of being instantly overwhelmed, the warrior dodged several attacks and dove through a stream of scorching fire, his black armor reflecting the crimson flames like the scales of an infernal monster. His gauntlet collided against the head of one of the enemies, instantly breaking the skull. White sparks slowly ignited in the depths of Neff's eyes. Interesting. <laughs> Neff doom scrolling. <laughs> She's like, uh, anyway, not interested. Oh my god. Yeah, she would be stuck on TikTok. Easy. <laughs> she lingered, watching the brutal slaughter with a hint of excitement. After spending years fighting against overwhelming odds, Nephis couldn't help but root for the lonesome swordman. A few seconds later, she was fully engrossed in the video. Remarkable. Oh my god, she doesn't, oh, she doesn't know that it's sunny. I can't. <laughs> Ah, okay. Imagine Sunny coming home. Oh my god, I found the most amazing man. TikTok video. I found this guy on the... What was it called? What is it called? It's not called the internet. What is it called? The web space? No, what the fuck is it called? The wood communicators. What is it called? The web something. I waited so long for you to read this. It was the best chapters in the whole novel. <laughs> Shit's great. Okay, so she just experienced Mongrel for the first time. I wonder what the fuck this will lead to. I have to challenge him. 
and then she goes in. And... <laughs> no, because Sunny only has one. Mm. Ah, we, okay. Chapter 784. Single Hole. The second lecture had turned out to be a challenge for Sunny. Not because he felt unprepared to teach the less experienced Awaken, but because all of them were very enthused enthused and full of questions about changing Star's return. Ah, of course. The whole academy was a buzz. Master Sunless, have you made Lady Changing Star? Is it true? Did she ascend? Are you going to join the Immortal Flame Clan now? Can we join too? What the fuck? No. Normally, that would not have been a problem. Sadly for Sunny, he could not refuse to answer any question due to his flaw. So it took some time and ingenuity to not let anything important slip while reining the students in. Eventually, he forced them to concentrate on the lecture. How? <laughs> Did he threaten them? After the lecture was over, he had to take care of some administrative issues, as well as visit teacher Julius, the goat, and assist the old man with a few tasks. Seeing that his assistant was very eager to leave, the elderly instructor did not keep Sunny long and soon let him go with a knowing smile. Ah, youth. <laughs> yes, run back home to your girlfriend. I mean... <laughs> Sunny frowned a little as he hurried to the door. What is that supposed to mean? Oh my god. Throwing the confusion out of his mind, Sunny decided to not waste time and use Shadow Step to reach the train station as fast as possible. On the way home, he was deep in thought. After the night of experimenting and exploring their bond, he was very curious what else Nephis and he could do. <laughs> as far as Sunny understood it, Shadow Bond made it so that their souls were strangely considered to be two parts of a single whole, at least when applied to the function of their aspects. So, did that mean that he could pull Neph with him through the shadows when using Shadow Step? <gasps> Ooh. If he used a charm like Blood Blossom, would its effect be shared to her? If so, would the boost granted to them remain the same, or grow twice as weak? He had many questions like that, and answers to them could only be found through further experimentation. Sunny was very excited. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be? He was always resentful of his weakness, and of the fact that the stronger awakened or powerful nightmare creatures could snuff out his life without too much trouble. Anything that could grant him more power to defend himself was a boon, and the memory of how powerful he had felt like he had felt last night was still fresh in his mind. Of course, reality was not so simple. Firstly, any experiment would demand Neff to go through torturous pain. Wow, okay, <laughs> okay. Secondly, he had not forgotten that his power came at a cost. The cost was his freedom. Pain and freedom. <laughs> we have been conditioned. <laughs> for the better, for the better. Nephis seemed to be reluctant to use the shadow bond to compel, him, to compel him to do her bidding, but he could not be completely sure of her intentions, not until they talked openly about it. Ooh. What are we actually? It was just that he didn't want to have that talk yet. <laughs> Talking openly about anything was the last thing he usually wanted to do. Yes, let's just enjoy it for now, right? Later. I'll do it later. Neff was barely out of the nightmare. Sunny himself had not been in the best of shapes after ascending for a while. It was better to give her some time to balance herself. Soon, he was nearing his house. The security system automatically scanned his biometrics and unlocked the door. Oh my god, of course. Opening it, Sonny walked inside and took off his shoes. Then he looked around and noticed Neff sitting on a tall stool near the kitchen counter, staring at her communicator with strange intensity. She's hooked. Her eyes were burning, and it seemed as if she had spent a lot of time without moving. <laughs> she will have like a, a phone hand, <laughs> like, a, a, like a claw. <laughs> She seemed to be so engrossed with what was happening on the screen that she did not even pay attention to his return. Clenching her fist, Neff suddenly spoke. Come on, you can do it. She's good, but you are better. Oh my god, I can't, I can't, for the love of god. 
He blinked a couple of times, unaccustomed to hearing such enthusiasm in Changing Star's voice. She was usually far more reserved. And what did she mean? What was he supposed to do? Who was he better than? Ah, she must be talking to herself. But what the hell is she watching? <laughs> He's gonna lose his shit. Sunny took a few steps forward and looked over Neff's shoulder. A strange expression appeared on his face. On the screen, a ferocious swordsman in black armor was fighting against a graceful woman who wore a light metal armor and an elegant half mask. Rose petals fell from above, carpeting a grandiose arena. A dark Udashi and a slender Estok, Estok, Estok clashed against each other, filling the air with a clangor of steel. Wait, isn't that, isn't that my duel against Queen Bee? That was a memorable fight. He had barely won that one. Sunny blinked a couple of times, remained silent for a few moments, and then coughed. Uh, <clears throat> hey, I am back. Nephis froze. She paused the video, hesitated, then slowly turned and looked at him with a startled expression. Oh, hi. Sunny stared at her for a couple of seconds, then asked with a little smile. What are you watching? <laughs> She's the most amazing person in the world. Nevis suddenly livened up and gestured, gestured at her communicator. Because we know how she was against Kai. Like, she's totally... Like, she has the fangirl fucking... Uh, how do you say that? <laughs> I was going to say, like, like a, the fangirl gene, you know? <laughs> But, <laughs> but yeah, so, mm, yeah. Mm. She's just a girl. <laughs> that, I stumbled on a video of a very interesting fighter. Have you heard about that guy, Mongrel? He's incredible. I've been watching, uh, studying his fights for a few hours. A few hours. So I scratched the back of his head and then said evenly. Mongrel. Yeah, I have heard a few things about him. Incredible, you say. Do tell what is so incredibly about him. In detail. <laughs> then he suddenly frowned and sniffed the air. What's that smell? Crap, don't tell me that the filtration system is glitching. Sunny looked around and then froze. His eye twitched. What? What happened to my projector? A familiar deadpan expression appeared on Neff's face. She glanced in the direction where the expensive model of the projector had used to be, lingered for a moment, and shrugged nonchalantly. Oh, a malfunction, I guess. How strange. <laughs> oh my god. These two. These two. Oh. When they're not in fucking... Life, like, life danger. These conversations, like, please. More. More. Chapter 785. Solitude. As Sonny bitterly explored the damage done to his entertainment system by the strange malfunction, Nevis silently watched him from her stool. Doesn't make sense gone. The projector is completely gone. It was so expensive. After a while, he turned to Changing Star with a miserable expression and opened his mouth and frowned in confusion. Wait, is that my shirt? Oh my god, now he's gonna lose his shit. If he was excited before. <laughs> Neff shifted a little and then said, her voice even, I don't have any clothes. Sunny stared at her for a few moments. Then waved a hand and looked away, forgetting what he was going to say. Never mind, you can keep it. We also we can also order a delivery of anything else you need. I am an incredibly rich entrepreneur, you know. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Random flex? Like what? He paused and then added with a bit of embarrassment. Well, I used to be rich anyway. These days I pretty much spend everything on research. She tilted her head a little, then suddenly said, The girl you're tutoring visited. 
I'm gonna kill Rain after this, bro. What? Pretending to be nonchalant, Sunny glanced at Nephis and answered in a neutral tone. Oh, strange. We weren't supposed to have any lessons until a few days from now. Neff remained silent for a few moments, then looked away with a smile. She's a bright kid. I'm glad you're teaching her. He studied her expression with a frown. What's up with that smile? Finally, Sunny shrugged. Well, money is money. My lessons aren't cheap. <laughs> Don't worry, your sugar daddy will pay for your clothes. That's literally what he said. <laughs> That's literally what he said. You can have anything. <laughs> anything you want. <laughs> I have the money. <laughs> After that, he sighed threw the destroyed projector out of his mind and walked into the kitchen. Are you hungry? I can cook something up. My culinary skills have improved a lot, you know? As you should have already noticed. Oh my god! Dude, he is like... dead set now. It was a strange thing. Back on the Forgotten Shore, Nevis had always been the one in charge of feeding the cohort. Now the rules seem to have reversed. In more ways than one. Oh, <laughs> he's on top now. She de Nephis is so bad, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she deactivated her communicator and said neutrally, I could eat. Thank you. <laughs> then Shiji saw a frown slightly and added, Oh, but I don't have a lot of time. There is a, a consultation with the government psychiatrist I need to attend shortly. By remote, of course. Oh, she's having Zoom calls. Okay. <laughs> Sunny stared at her for a while, then shook his head. This is so weird. Deciding to prepare something that did not demand a lot of time to make, he took out a pack of ramen, some vegetables, a piece of natural meat, and a pair of eggs. I never thought that I would hear something like that from you, of all people. A uh, psychiatrist. Really? He started the process of cooking ramen and added, Was it really that bad? Shijin Star sighed and looked down. After a while, she suddenly said, No, it wasn't too bad. Her voice sounded distant and a bit strange. In fact, out there in the dream realm, I felt... Nephis inhaled deeply and then looked at him somberly. Happy. What? She Has she fucking lost it? I was happy in my solitude by myself without you guys. I could finally <laughs> do whatever I always wanted to do. <laughs> Befriend skeletons and just walk in a desert. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sunny almost dropped the cooking pot. Of all the answers out there, he had not expected to hear that one. Looking at Nephis with an incredulous expression, he asked, What? Did you say happy? She sighed and nodded. What the fuck? I know that it sounds strange, and yes, traveling through that hell alone was excruciating, terrible and hard. <laughs> no, many times I did not think that I would survive. Other times I wanted to die. There was so much pain, so much hunger, so much thirst, so much cold, so much unbearable heat, so much silence. A wistful expression slowly settled on her face. But it was also so simple, so liberating. All I had to do was walk, fight, kill, survive. There was no space for unnecessary thoughts, no burdens I had to carry, no complicated feelings, no responsibility. 
I did not have to remember where I came from and where I was headed. I did not have to be a part of anything. It was just me against the nightmare creatures and the dream realm itself. He listened silently, trying to imagine what living like that would feel like. I mean, bro, they all did it. Oh, I guess, oh, she was alone. I guess that's the, eh. That's the difference. And that she was like, I don't know when, when I will get out ever. And it was a long time. Well, he didn't have to try too hard. Had he not experienced something similar while living alone in the ruined cathedral of the Dark City? Okay, literally. <laughs> okay. Yes, he had not been entirely himself back then, but... But he was also the happiest he had ever been, perhaps. There was a bliss in giving up on everything except for the things he needed to survive. Even if the things he was giving up on were his sanity, his future, and his very humanity. These people. These people. All I want to be happy is being alone, having to fight every day just to survive, maybe eat, lose my sanity and humanity. Then I will truly feel happiness. The fuck? Like, I can understand it in a way, but it's like... That's not good. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not good. Granted, his isolation had only lasted for several months instead of years, and the environment had not been as dire. What would have happened to him if he had not abandoned the cathedral to join Changing Star's ill-fated crusade? She looked down and added evenly. I have never felt truly connected to the rest of humanity. I was always a bit of a stranger, I guess. Oh. Typical fucking... <laughs> Why does this feel so like... <laughs> like I'm not like everyone else. This is not a face. Stop! <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like my own thing. <laughs> Humans are stupid. I hate the world. Mm. <laughs> Literally this. Out there in the dream realm, with only nightmare creatures surrounding me, that connection grew even more ethereal. Sometimes I even felt like everything except for that desolate purgatory had been just a fleeting dream. A strange illusion that I had imagined. The dream realm. It seemed much more real. It seemed like a place where I belonged. With other monsters like me. See? Like, <laughs> like stop. Oh. She sighed then looked at him and added. So that's why I agreed to the offer to, receiving, to receive counseling. It is not because I feel fragile and on the verge of breaking apart. It's just that I'm afraid to lose what little humanity I have left. I never had a lot to begin with. Okay, so at least she's, she doesn't want to. <laughs> that, that's something. After Neff was done speaking, Sunny stared at her for some time, then shook his head. Can we please be in the psychiatrist meetings? For the love of God, like, I want to know. Like, I, oh. I don't think I have ever heard Neff speak so much. I, I also thought about that as, like, the words she's using, <laughs> even. <laughs> like, Placing ramen in the boiling water, he glanced at her with a frown. Well, if you put it like that, I guess a little counseling would do you good. <laughs> she's like, yep. <laughs> Sunny is like... Yep, Neff, you need help. <laughs> However, I can tell you right now, without a shadow of a doubt, that you are not a nightmare creature. You are human through and through. Believe me, I would know. <laughs> a pale smile appeared on Changing Star's face. Thank you for saying that. Sunny looked at her with an amused expression and then smiled. I don't think you understand. I'm not saying this because I consider you a human, or because I feel like you are a human, or because I believe that you are a human. It's just a fact. He pointed to his eye. I have special eyes, remember? From that attribute of mine, I have seen what people look like, and what nightmare creatures look like inside. He peered into Neff's soul and grimaced. 
almost blinded by the brilliant radiance of five flaming incandescent suns that burned inside of it. There was no sign of the vile darkness that dwelled in the souls of the corrupted abominations. Cracking an egg on the edge of the pan, he looked at her and scoffed. You don't look anything like a nightmare creature. That's all. <laughs> I love the, the fucking... What is it called? Negging? <laughs> but he's just like... <laughs> I'm not saying that, that you're great or anything. It's just... This is just the, the thing. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> so like passive, passively, aggressively positive. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how to describe it. Actually, you're hot. <laughs> no, that's not what he said. That's not what he said. <laughs> dehumanized her by saying like I don't see you I don't believe like there is nothing to me that says that you're a human I just say that you're not a nightmare creature that's what he said I'm like okay thanks I guess <laughs> I'm like what Ugh. I look inside you and you're pretty hot times five chapter 786 Lifeline. Soon, two bowls of delicious steaming ramen were on the table in front of them. Sunny had never invited anyone to taste this ramen. <laughs> um. Uh, but he was quite pleased with the result. Help. Help me. His past of only eating synth face seemed so distant that he did not even want to remember it. Bro, it was only a couple of chapters ago when you were like, I can eat synth paste, I don't care. Both dug in and finished their portions in record time. Sunny drank the last of the fragrant broth and let out the delighted sigh. Nevis acted more reserved, but he could feel that she was very satisfied too. Oh my god. <laughs> Putting the bowl away, Shaging Star smiled slightly and looked at him. A hesitant expression appeared on her face. A few moments later, she suddenly said, Be that as it may, while I was lost and wandering the dream realm, slowly forgetting what it felt like to be human. There was one thing I clung to that reminded me that all my prior life had not been just a dream. Do you know what it was? If he says that, if she says Sunny, I'm gonna die. Sunny thought a bit, then shrugged. I don't know. A memory, your sword, dream blade. She lingered for a few moments and slowly shook her head. No, it was you. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What the fuck? Dude, I feel like we're so close right now. Like we've never. Guilty 3 is not stopping. He's like, no. <laughs> we, we are going all the way. Oh, holy shit, I... Uh, oh. He's ready to take it all the way. Guilty 3 is fucking batshit. Okay. Sunny froze and stared at her with surprise. Huh? Nevis smiled slightly. Your runes. Although I could not know what was happening to you, Cassie and the others. I love that it's Cassie and the others. I mean, it's true, but still, it's funny that she says it. I could still feel connected to you through the runes. I could see that you were still out there, alive, and doing incredible things. Just like Sunny did to her. Ah! The new memories you received told me a little about what kind of enemies you fought. The speed at which your aspect legacy progressed told me how hard you were working to sharpen your battle skill. As long as I saw the runes, I knew I knew that I had not imagined the past and did not feel as alone. Ooh. She shifted and then added, "When I was bored, I liked to imagine what exactly happened to give you a sudden influx of fragments, what the nightmare creatures that gifted you a memory looked like, how you defeated it, things." 
things like that. Oh, and I was bored often. But I was so happy in there, I swear. While my journey was often full of hardship and dread, it could also be terribly monotonous sometimes. But super happy, super happy. So that was pretty much the only way I could entertain myself. So happy. <laughs> okay. Changing Star looked at him, lingered for a moment and then said, I know it was not really something that you did consciously. Still, I wanted to say thank you. You helped me a lot, Sunny. You made it easier for me to keep going. I won't forget that. He stared at her, suddenly uncomfortable. Then he looked away in embarrassment and cleared his throat. <sighs> or... Are you sure that you have not received counseling already? I mean, that doesn't sound like you. Very, uh, enlightened. Anyway, you're welcome, I guess. Nephi smiled and did not respond. Sana remained silent for a bit and then forced himself to say, Actually, I spent a lot of time staring at your runes as well. <laughs> he looked at the floor. Granted, I was not exactly going crazy from isolation like you. Well, except for a short stretch of falling into a bottomless abyss all alone, I guess. But the point is, to be honest, I was... I am unsatisfied with the fact that you are so far ahead of me. <gasps> Every time you gained a soul fragment, it urged me to try and get two. The stronger you grew, the more I wanted to become stronger as well. A large part of those things I gained was because of you. I guess you, too, kept me going, in a sense. Oh my god. He fell silent and then glanced at Nephis with a slightly bitter expression. Of course, no matter how hard I tried, I had never managed to catch up to you. Every time I fell short, every time I fell short, it did not feel nice at all. But it also forced me to try harder, I guess. She studied his face for a few moments and then shook her head. It is much easier for me to gain soul fragments. You know that. Even though I am still ahead, I suspect that you have fought and slain many more nightmare creatures than I have. In fact, I know you did. Sunny smiled. Who cares? It's not a competition where you get rewarded for the effort. Only the result matters. In the end, a person is either strong or they are weak. The stronger ones will always trample those who are weaker. Isn't that how the world works? Nevis looked down and slowly shook her head. You are wrong, I think. Results matter, yes, but it's not like how you got there does- It's not like how you got there doesn't. Every victory you achieve teaches you a lesson. Every defeat you suffer teaches you even more. I guess it all depends on what you call strength. Sunny grimaced. Well, let me ask you a question. Can you say that I am stronger than you? <gasps> Changing Star stared at him with an even expression. Several seconds passed by, but she remained silent. A dark grin appeared on Sunny's face. He sighed and then collected empty bowls to clean them. Effie doesn't seem to think that I am. According to her, I lack conviction. I don't even really know what conviction is and where does one find it. But even I can't honestly say that I am stronger than you. That should tell you something, considering, you know, my clear conscience. Nephis lingered for a few moments and then suddenly said in a calm tone, You are stronger than you think you are. Sunny put the bowls into the sink and turned on the water. Standing with his back to her, he stayed quiet for a while. After some time, he started to wash the dishes and said, your counseling session is about to start. You should hurry. She looked at his back for a few moments, then silently stood up and went away. Then he was left alone in the kitchen. He finished washing the bowls, put them on the drying rack, and wiped his hands with a towel. Then he glanced in the direction of the guest room, shook his head and scoffed. <sighs> Who cares? Apparently, I am incredible. Because of mongrel. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. 
But Sonny, you can't, you can't build relationships on a lie. One day she'll find out and then she'll be pissed if you haven't told her. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Amazing chapter. Damn. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> she is embarrassed. He can't lie, though. <laughs> you know what I mean. Chapter 787. Training session. A week later, two people sat across from each other on the cold floor of the underground dojo. Their eyes closed. With their legs crossed and their hands resting on their laps, it seemed as though they were meditating. Of course, they weren't. <laughs> While Sunny was calm and relaxed, Nephis was the opposite. There was a furious torrent of soul energy flowing through her body, making it hard for her to remain still. Invisible to anyone except for her partner, partner? radiant streams of ethereal essence rushed through her veins like rivers of flame. Her breathing was uneven, and there were beads of sweat on her face. Sunny observed Changing Star through his shadows. After a while, he said, You are doing much better. While crude, your control is already stable. However, there is no precision to it. A master has to be intricate in how they apply and expand their essence. That is what truly separates us from the awakened. While the soul... What the fuck? There's something flying here, though. <laughs> While the soul of an ascendant is more potent, the gap is not too strange. It is our ability to make better use of this potential that really separates us from the rest of them. Neff was doing well. In fact, her rapid progression in learning how to control her essence was nothing short of exceptional. However, she was facing substan substantial obstacles in her training. Not only was Changing Star completely new to that aspect of her power, she also simply had too much soul essence. Compared to normal master, compared to normal master, eh, she had at least five times as much of it. If most ascended contained a tranquil current of essence within their bodies, Nephis contained a furious sea. Her soul essence was also different from anything Sunny had ever faced. It was much more potent, fiery, and vibrant, vibrant, probably because of the fire attribute she had inherited from her mother. What it effectively meant was that Neph would have to put much more effort into learning to control her essence. However, once she did climb over the steep, that steep obstacle, the result was going to be simply terrifying. Showing her the way put Sonny's own experiences in perspective, gifting him a few new insights of his own. Just as it had been with Rain, the role of mentor allowed him to learn a lot himself. Teaching was truly the best way to learn. Now Sonny felt that his own essence control was far more precise and nuanced than that of most, even without the help of Soul Serpent. Of course, he had no chance to test it in actual combat yet. He was also growing more and more sour about the fact that both Blood Weave and Bone Weave were purely corporal in nature. Nature. <laughs> nature. Although Shadow Essence was unique, it did not receive any augmentation from his attributes. In fact, the only time his strange nature played a role had been during his encounter with the vile thieving bird's spawn. Even though that single instance had saved his life, Sunny really wished for more. Maybe I'm not utilizing its full potential. If there was a way to do so, however, he had no idea how. Maybe if Weaver's lineage had not devoured the Shadow Gods, Sunny would have been in a different situation. As it stood, though, I wonder if there is a soul weave. Neva sighed and opened her eyes. The turbulent flow of soul essence in her body settled, returning to a calmer cycle. She rested for a moment and then rose to her feet. Sunny did the same, commanding the four shadows to wrap themselves around his body. Are you ready? She nodded and then exploded in motion, attacking him with her fists. Empowered by the shadows, Sunny easily dodged, deflected and blocked the torrent of devastating punches and kicks. This was the second part of their training. Nephis not only had to learn how to control soul essence, but also how to use it in battle. 
She had to retrain herself from the ground up to account for all the new possibilities that the ascension granted her. This was not an easy task, considering that the difference went much deeper than simple physical ability and explosive might. At their high level, combat became at their high level, combat became much more tactical. Soul essence was a precious resource that could achieve a lot, but was also easily wasted. A master had to be strategic in how they unleashed their powers. Their physical performance, aspect, and memories could all benefit from vast amounts of essence. However, they could also quickly deplete it. The same statement held true for Awakened, but to a much lesser degree. Since masters had much greater powers at their disposal, and thus could exert much greater volumes of soul essence. I'm sorry, but this, this is like... Sleeping few. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, come back, come back, please. <laughs> it was a constant and complicated dance that required a lot of skill, foresight, and cunning to be performed to the best result. Sunny himself still had a lot to learn. Serving as a bona fide punching bag for Nephis was not the most efficient way of learning, but it had its own merits. By dedicating himself to nothing but withstanding a constant barrage of attacks and rationing his essence in the most efficient way, Sunny was teaching himself how to prepare for long battles of attri attrition. At least she had mastered essence control enough to not ruin the dojo. For a while, the underground chamber was filled with nothing but the sounds of heavy breathing and flesh-hitting flames. <laughs> there we go, guilty three, come back, <laughs> dude. Dude. Okay. Both fighters were exerting themselves to the utmost degree. Sunny had it easier since he was defending. He was defending, okay. I didn't know there was a defender. <laughs> but receiving so many crushing blows in a row was still not the weak for the weak of heart. Hmm. So there's a defender. <laughs> Is that the new thing? Are you attacker or defender? <laughs> Each of Neff's essence empowered strikes could have punched through an armored vehicle after all. If not for the fact that she was not using her flames to augment herself, Sunny would have been suffering from internal bleeding by now. Having nearly indestructible bones was a big advantage, but it did not make him invincible. Their furious clash lasted until Nephis exhausted most of her essence. Determined to launch one last attack, she stepped closer. Her slender leg whipped forward, threatening to crush Sunny's ribcage. He swiftly turned and caught it in the air, then gently placed it on the ground. That... that's enough for today. Since this had been their routine for the entirety, entirety of the last week, wow, neither said another word. Both fell to the floor, spent and utterly exhausted. Their breathing was hoarse, and their clothes were soaked with sweat. <laughs> Damn, I need a shower. However, the idea of standing up seemed too cruel right now. Sunny turned his head to glance at Nephis and judged that she was in an even more pitiful state. So they simply remained on the floor for a few minutes, laying side by side and trying to catch her breath. Hmm. <laughs> okay. After a while, Sunny's communicator suddenly made a sound. Of course, it was not on his person. A clash of such intensity would have quickly destroyed the expensive device, so Sunny had left it on the lid of the dreamscape pod. Now he faced the necessity to walk all the way to the alcove to retrieve it. Instead, Sunny commanded the happy shadow to glide there. Turn tangible, pick up the communicator, bring it back. <laughs> the fool was utterly delighted to oblige, anyway. As the shadow gingerly crossed the underground dojo and presented the communicator to Sunny, he glanced at the screen and then sighed. Time to go, Neff. Cassie is on her way. Stupid Cassie, dude. <laughs> at least she had the decency to come, like, after <laughs> Ooh, 
Yes. Oh, oops. Chapter 788. Cordial Invitation. Sunny took a quick shower and went downstairs. By the time he came down, Nevis was just exiting the guest room. She changed from the gym shorts and a tank top that she had been wearing for their practice session and put on some of the clothes they had ordered for her a few days back. Her silver hair was wet, glistening in the rays of sunshine that poured through the windows. Without having to say anything, Sunny went to the kitchen, opened a drawer, and took out a can of grounded coffee. Then he stretched his arm back. By then, Nevis had already filled the pot with water and placed it into his hand. Soon, the pleasant aroma spread through the house. Damn, okay. <laughs> it's like they're playing that game. What is it called? The, like, the cooking together? No. The fucking, you have to be fast as fucking. <laughs> that one anyway, because they're synchronized. Mm -hmm. By the time the coffee was ready, a PTV was in the process of parking nearby. Overcooked! Yes, overcooked. Sunny dumped, dumped, dumped two spoons of sugar into his cup, left the one intended for Neff without any, and added cream to the third. Changing Star, meanwhile, was opening the door for Cassie. Soon, all three were seated around the table, enjoying their respective beverages. After a while, Sunny glanced at the blind girl and asked, Well, what's the news? She lingered for a bit, then pushed her cup away and produced two flat, white squares. Sunny stared at them for a bit, confused. Then he blinked a couple of times. Is that an envelope? He's never seen an envelope before? Indeed, that was what the white squares were. They seemed to be made out of paper. I was just going to say, though, because paper is made out of wood, and wood is hard to get, so maybe envelopes aren't that big of a thing anymore. <laughs> and each had a round piece of red wax attached to it. Oh, fancy. Sunny had only seen an actual paper envelope used in period, period, period dramas, so he was justifiably surprised to encounter one in real life. Taking one of the envelopes, he curiously studied it from different sides. How oh, quaint. There was an image of a sword piercing an anvil etched into the red wax, so at least he did not have to wonder where the strange things had come from. Legacies. Amused, he furtively glanced at Nephis to learn what one was supposed to do with the paper envelope, and then repeated her actions. Soon a different piece of paper appeared in his hands. <coughs> Master Sunless, you are cordially invited- What? What is this? Even more confused than before, he turned to Cassie and raised an eyebrow. She was supposed to bring them an update on the situation with the government and Clan Valor, not some weird messages. The blind girl smiled slightly. Basically, this is a gesture of goodwill. She paused for a moment and then added in a bright tone. It's like, they're, <laughs> they're like, in invited to what? A party? It is an invitation. Clan Valor is holding an annual ball in about a month. Oh my god. Okay. 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 We are all invited to attend, which is usually considered a great honor. Not every master receives the, the privilege to brush sides with the most powerful representatives of the great clans and actual saints. Sunny blinked a couple of times. Is holding balls some weird legacy ceremony? Wait, what kinds of ball are we talking about? Something like a football? Oh my god, please fucking. Why do people hold it annually? And more importantly, why do we have to attend this ball holding ritual? <laughs> yes, they're gonna grab your balls, Sonny. And they're gonna be like, now nah, you listen to me, you little shit. <laughs> now you join us. <laughs> or else. That's what this is. Sonny blinked a couple of times. No, 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 no. Nevis silently covered her face with a hand and said, a hint of exasperation finding his way into her voice. Sunny, a ball is a social gathering, usually accompanied by a dance. It is not a literal ball. 
He stared at her for a moment, then glanced at the piece of paper in his hand and coughed. I imagine that he holds paper just like L in Death Note holds paper. <laughs> like we just use the, the thumb and the uh, other finger. I don't know what the fingers are called in here. <laughs> that was a pointy thing. <laughs> But he holds them just at the top. He's like, mm. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, no. He stared at her for a moment, then glanced at the piece of paper in his hand and coughed. Oh, that makes more sense, I guess. Cassie listened to them speak with a strange expression, then tilted her head a little and said, Of course, in our case, this invitation holds special meaning. It is a sign that Clan Valor is willing to be patient and wait for Nephis to recover. It is also an indication that the final negotiation is going to take place during the ball, one month from now. This gives us time to prepare. This was a good piece of news, all things considered. Basically, it meant that now the initial week was over. Changing Star had more time to get ready to face the representatives of Clan Valor. It also meant that the Great Clan was not going to do anything before that giving her freedom to recuperate in peace. It was more or less an armistice. Armistice. Arm <laughs> anyway, a bright smile appeared on Cassie's delicate face. But there is more. To show their sincerity, Clan Valor released the firekeepers they were holding hostage. Both are already back and resting in the Immortal Flame Manor. This... This means that they are serious about building a good relationship with us, I think. Yeah. Ah. Sonny let out a sigh. He was not really attached to the fire keepers. <laughs> He's like, I don't give a fuck about two random people being <laughs> left released from prison. Still, they had gone through the civil war in the Bright Castle and the Siege of the Crimson Spire together. The fools also treated him as one of their own for some reason. He had felt a bit guilty knowing that some of them were suffering because of the terrible mess in the Night Temple. Effie, Kai, and Aiko were going to be very happy to hear the news too. However, it was not like Clan Valor to let go of a leverage. Sonny glanced at Cassie and frowned. What are they scheming? The blind girl hesitated for a few moments, then shrugged. I am not entirely sure. However, I do have a suspicion. This sudden change must indicate that something important happened to shift the balance of power even more in favor of Clan Song. That is why Valor is willing to make concessions to ensure that Immortal Flame becomes their ally. Red. Why red? Sunny suddenly felt a strong sense of unease. What could have happened to change the power dynamics between two, the two great clans so much? Why red? He took a sip of his coffee and then asked, Well, so what now? Cassie smiled. Now? Now we are free to do anything we want for a month. The government is going to insist that Nevis makes at least one public appearance, but they won't be too forceful in their demands. So, we can do whatever. Beach episode! Beach episode! <laughs> she turned to Changing Star and said, her voice full of warmth. Nev, how do you feel about finally coming home? We can go to the manor right now, if you're ready. Stay with Sunny. Stay with Sunny. Be Chef is on. <laughs> yes, for fuck's sake, bring Sunny. He has to see the manor. He hasn't been there. Chapter 789. Only forward. Nevis looked in the window and remained silent for a while. Her face was distant and still. After a while, she slightly shook her head. No. Not yet. Yes! Wanna stay here? No, not yet. Cassie seemed to be surprised by that answer. No? But why? Changing Star sighed. The Firekeepers. That is what people call the Awakened who follow you, right? They all look up to me, do they not? The blind girl silently nodded. Of course! We... They have been waiting for your return ever since escaping the Forgotten Shore. Even though the Dreamer Army was an al alliance of convenience, the bonds that were forged between its members are real. Their bond to you is real, too. 
Sunny sipped his coffee with a strange expression. Neff, meanwhile, lingered for a moment and then said, But they want more than just to welcome me back. They expect me to leave them, like I did on the Forgotten Shore. Am I correct? Cassie nodded once again. She's like, yes? <laughs> it's like, no, Cassie, no, this is bad. Neff looked away. How can I lead them when I don't know where I am going? I, I need more time to figure things out before I face them. The blind girl remained silent for a while, then sighed. I, I understand, I think. Sunny, meanwhile, did not understand. <laughs> sure, on the surface, what Nephis said made perfect sense. She was not sure of what she was going to do, so she could not offer the remnants of the Dreamer Army guidance. She could not become their general again until she decided on, direc on the direction her soldiers had to follow. However, Sunny harbored doubts about the sincerity of this indecision. Nevis had never been one to allow her hesitation to slow her down. More than that, she had spent two whole years alone in the Dream Realm. If, she knew any if he knew anything about her, he knew that she must have dedicated a considerable amount of that time to obsessively making plans of how to destroy her enemies once she returned. Of course, there was a lot of new information that became available to Neff after she came back. That had to change her approach that had to change her approach a little, but should not have affected the core of it. So why was she hesitating? What was she struggling with? Sunny did not know and was not sure that he wanted to know yet. In any case, he was going to learn sooner or later. There was something else that bothered him though. He glanced at Nephis and Cassie and then said, his voice grumpy, Aren't you two forgetting something? This is still my home. We only agreed that Nephis would stay here for a week. Shouldn't you at least ask me before deciding to leave, to leave her here for a while longer? Wow. <laughs> okay. He was not going to let Changing Star pull off an Effie that easily. Oh, pulling off an Effie. Overstaying. Pulling off an Effie. Can this be a word, a, a, like, worldwide known thing now, please? To pull off an Effie? <laughs> to stay on someone's couch a bit too long? Don't pull an Effie on me. <laughs> He's pulling an Effie. That's amazing. Please. Make it real. It is, it, no, it is real now. Use it. Describe it. Teach them called mooching no it's called pulling off an effie <laughs> dude i totally pulled off an effie <laughs> they were clueless <laughs> i've never heard mooching before but i've heard pull off an effie so hmm. <laughs> um same here? Yeah, look at that, look at that. Neff turned and looked at him with an unreadable expression. After a few moments of silence, she asked, Sonny, do you mind if I stay for a couple more weeks? He coughed and then glanced away in embarrassment. Of course. Sure, no problem. Glad to have you and all that. See? Was that so hard? Oh my god. <laughs> look at him, look at him. She used the puppy eyes. <laughs> she <laughs> touched her hair a bit. <laughs> Sunny, please. Can I pull off an Effie? Oh. Spilled the water on my arm. Anyway. Cassie remained for a bit longer to get... Ne She's also effie -ing. Stop effie <laughs> Cassie remained for a bit longer to get Nevis up to speed about the state of the firekeepers and the renovations they were making to the immortal flame manor, and then left. Running a prominent awakened organization was not an easy task, so she had a lot she had a lot on her plate. Sunny and Neff were left alone again. He hesitated for a few moments and then asked Do you really not want to go home? I mean, I never really had one, more or less, before buying this house. But if I did, I imagine I would have missed it a lot. I don't think she has the perfect, like, oh, yes, my home. Like, I don't think she has good feelings about that manner, if anything. I don't see it. 
What? Well... No, but she liked her parents, but then they died. That's what it was, right? Her parents were nice. Yeah, so maybe. Maybe she has some. Uh, Nephis glanced at him, then slowly shook her head. That place is not really my home. Or I was right. We were moving a lot while I was growing up. Sometimes because our financial situation changed. Sometimes due to the security issues. That manor is just the last in a long series of temporary shelters. Ah. She remained silent for a few minute, moments, then added. I guess it was the people who surrounded me that created the feeling of home. But they are all gone now, one way or the other. So there is nothing for me to return to. Sunny sighed, remembering the conversation he once had with Noctis. I don't really understand what the Immortal Flame Clan is, to be honest. And who those people were. You once said that you were raised by your grandmother. Cheating Star nodded. The Immortal Flame is just me, now. At its height, it was one of the most influential legacy clans. You could have called it a great clan, even. Although that distinction was not established yet back then. Apart from the immediate, immediate family, the clan also encompassed hundreds of other people. Professionals to manage our properties, craftsmen, mundane soldiers, awakened retainers, their dependents. A legacy clan is more than just a few powerful warriors. It is a, a large, self-sufficient institution. <laughs> institution. A tribe, even. Oh, tribe, okay. She grew silent and then said, Of course, our fortunes turned out turned after Immortal Flame himself died, and my mother became hollow. Then my father was gone, too. Only my grandmother remained to take care of me. She was not an awakened. However, don't think that she was weak because of it. On the contrary, although my grandmother was a mundane human, she was also the strongest person I've ever known. Nephis looked away, a hint of emotion appearing on her face. She was a member of the first generation. She was born during the darkest times of humanity, survived the bloody descent of the spell and the final convulsion of the old world order, then participated in the establishment of the new one. She was strong. She was also wise and kind. I couldn't wish for a better guardian. She looked down. However, she was not enough to keep the Immortal Flame Clan from falling, especially not when we found ourselves in the crosshairs of my father's former companions. Slowly but surely, we lost our assets and our standing. Some of the people in our employ, in our employ, <laughs> left of their own free will. Others were forced to abandon us because of adverse adversity. Many of those who remained died trying to protect me. The most loyal ones still persisted. There were several awakened among them, and even a master, my mentor. Never sighed. But in the end, he was gone too. By the time I turned 16, all that remained were a few mundane servants who had been with us for so long that they had nowhere else to go. After my grandmother passed away and I felt the call of the nightmare spell, I paid them a generous stipend from what little funds the clan had left and let them go. You know the rest. Shinji Star remained silent for a while and then added, I remember walking through the manor before leaving it to, complete, to comply with the third directive and surrender myself to the police. It was so strange, seeing it completely empty. My grandmother was gone, my mother was in the care facility, the servants had left, it was just me, alone. Just like in the fucking dream realm. You love that place, remember? You were happy. <laughs> she looked away. Suddenly a pale smile appeared in her face. Nothing held me back. So I wasn't sad to leave at all. There was only one direction left for me. Forward. Sunny looked at her silently. A somber expression hidden in, in the depths of his eyes. Only forward. That was true for the both of them, still. 
However, was it worth it to not be held back by anything, if in return you had nothing to hold dear? Turning away, he sighed. Life was not that simple anymore. Mm -hmm. Life has changed indeed. Oh, an outing! <gasps> I feel a beach episode! <laughs> Picnic, please! Oh, with everyone. Ah, please. Ah, okay. <laughs> Chapter 790. Outing. Despite the fact that Nephis had decided to stay with Sunny for a couple more weeks, or rather, that he had allowed her to stay, sure, their routine somewhat changed. Because of the armist armistice <laughs> with Clan Valor, she did not have to stay inside all the time anymore. So while the two of them still continued having exhausting practice sessions every day, every day, the intensity of the training diminished. You, you have to take some break for it to get... No, on the first day after receiving the invitation to the ball, Nephis had left to visit her mother. Soon after that, she had a strange request. The counselor assigned to Nephis, to Neph by the government, had suggested that she should not isolate herself from mundane humans and instead seek out opportunities to participate in collective activities people usually enjoyed. So she asked Sunny to help her figure out what it was that people did with their free time. Oh my god, this is perfect! Oh, Sunny was glad to help. The problem was, he had no idea himself. Oh my god, these two people out doing normal shit will be the most fucked, like... What the fuck, okay? His life experience was richer than hers, but the knowledge of how people lived their lives in the outskirts did not exactly apply to their situation. After becoming a citizen and moving to a better part of the city, Sunny had spent all his time doing more productive things than relaxing. <laughs> Who had time to relax? There were so many things he needed to achieve. As a result, they had to turn to other members of the cohort for advice. Oh my god. Going to Kai, Effie, and Cassie. What do normal people do? <laughs> when they did, Effie enthusiastically volunteered to arrange an outing. Although Sunny had a bad premonition about her proposal, he found no polite reason to refuse the giddy huntress. Yes, sir. So a few days later, he found himself doing something that he had never thought he would ever do. Sunny was getting ready to go to a dance club! <gasps> oh. <laughs> what the fuck is it? Karaoke? <laughs> yeah! Oh my god, amazing spelling. Love that spelling. Oh. Dude, hit the nail on that one. He is going to a dance club. Please, dude, Sonny on a rave. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god, I am dying. What am I even doing? This, this is so stupid. <laughs> Standing in front of the mirror, he somberly looked at the pale young man that stared back at him. The young man was dressed in stylishly understated clothes that mixed black with different shades of dark gray. Oh, okay. He was undeniably attractive, okay, although not exactly masculine in appearance. The attractive young man, of course, was him. <laughs> or his reflect reflection, rather. Hmm? Sunny studied it and frowned. Whatever, it's just a nightclub. Oh my god, it is a nightclub. I have fought saints and survived. Bro, this is not the same. I have conquered the Red Colosseum. Hmm. I have faced a daemon. How scary can a bunch of drunk mundanes be? You have no clue. No clue. Shaking his head, he let out a heavy sigh and went down to the living room. I am... I, 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 I cannot, like... I'm trying to use... I want to continue reading, but I'm too, like... Oh my god, like... My, <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't. As he sat and waited with a dark expression on his face, an expensive PTV arrived and parked near the house. Ugh. At that moment, Effie and Neff emerged from one of the smaller bedrooms on the second floor and started descending the stairs. Oh my god, they're gonna look 
they're gonna look hot and shit now and he's gonna be like what the fuck <laughs> finally what took you so he turned and froze unable to finish his thoughts here he comes here he comes Standing on the polished steps, Neff looked different. Mm -hmm. Although she was famous across the world, most people only knew her by name. Very few had actually seen the renowned changing star of the Immortal Flame Clan, mostly because she had yet to appear in public after her return from the Dream Realm. Yeah, how is this gonna go as well? Like, are they, they can't go to some random ass fucking night. Like, every, okay. Because mm -hmm. they're gonna be recognized. <laughs> However, it was still prudent. <gasps> However, it was still prudent to mask some of her more recognizable features to avoid being mobbed by an excited crowd. Okay. For that reason, Sunny had lent her the autumn leaf. <gasps> That's the hair thingy, right? The hair color thing. Using the cosmetic memory, Nephis changed the color of her distinct silver hair to what? Red. <laughs> Now her hair was black and lustrous. Okay. Boring. Falling to the middle of her back like a waterfall of finest silk. Contrasted against it, her calm gray eyes seemed even more striking. Her ivory skin seemed to glow despite the fact that she was not channeling the radiant white flames. And that's because she you will look even paler if you have dark hair. Like black hair. Sunny, please. <laughs> what was more? Effie had been the one who chose and bought the clothes for the two of them to wear today. As a result, Nephis was wearing a vibrant red, there we go, there we go, red dress that barely reached the middle of her thigh. Wow. And left her shoulders bare. She looked stunning. My god. Sunny Gold then forced himself to look away. I love that he didn't even say anything about like what Effie wore or anything because he is like, oh my god, like Effie though, but Nephis, you know? But he was like, fuck Effie. <laughs> like, I didn't even mention it if it won't be soon. Whew. Who is Effie? <laughs> yeah, Effie, who? Holy shit. Okay. Except <laughs> one B. <laughs> oh. uh. she looks funny. Sonny gulped, then forced himself to look away. A few moments later, he finally was able to say something. That, uh, never thought I'd see you in a dress one day. Nephis glanced at herself and shrugged with indifference. I like it. The style does not diminish my range of motion. I can move freely if something happens. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what do you mean? What's gonna happen? Sunny hesitated and then glanced at Effie, who was wearing less flashy clothes, with suspicion. How come you get to wear pants? <gasps> Effie grinned. Why else? That's because I'm not a princess, Dofus. Dude, word. She giggled and then did a spin. What? You don't think that my ensemble is flattering? It was. Maybe even too much so. Ah, oh, there we go. Not knowing where to put his eyes, Sonny gritted his teeth and forced himself to stare at the wall. This is going to be a long night. Then <laughs> Kai shows up in a dress too. And he's the best looking of all of them. <laughs> He cleared his throat and then said, Yeah, you look nice too. Anyway, we should go. Our ride is already here. Effie giggled again, patted him on the shoulder and headed for the door. Sunny and Nevis followed. Together. Soon they entered the PTV and agreed to the others. After seeing Kai, Sunny's mood improved a bit. At least the former idol seemed to be in his element. <laughs> what? Cassie, on the other hand, seemed uneasy. Well, no wonder. A club filled with thundering music was not the best environment for a beautiful blind girl to be in. Of course, anyone who got the wrong idea was bound to learn that they made a giant mistake by approaching her with ill intent. Kai smiled at him from the driver's seat. 
Kai's driving again. <laughs> okay. Sunny, you look great. Then he turned to Nephis and Effie and smiled even wider. Okay. Allowing, almost blinding them with his dazzling grin. But not as great as the ladies do, of course. What the fuck? <laughs> Kai! Stop! <laughs> Dude, he didn't hesitate. <laughs> Sunny rolled his eyes. Of course he did. Just drive? Alright, let's get this finished with as soon as possible. <laughs> Kai winked at him, then looked at the road and sent the P3 forward. Relax, Sunny. It's just a dance club. What's the worst that could happen? Holy shit. Sunny and the gloomy shadow simultaneously shuddered. Are you kidding me? Did you have to say that out loud? <laughs> Oh my god. What the fuck? <laughs> Chapter 791 Human Rituals Standing at the edge of the VIP area that loomed above the dance floor of a popular nightclub, Sunny and Nephis looked down at the un undulating mass of human bodies below them with strange expressions. The music thundered and reverberated from all sides, making the whole space vibrate. The darkness was filled with flashes of light and glowing figures of elaborate moving projections. People were having the time of their lives. The club Effie had brought them to was an exclusive, exclusive and luxurious establishment that only the members of the elite classes of human society could visit. Okay, so makes more sense now, <laughs> but still. The amount of credits being spent every minute on exotic alcoholic beverages and legal stimulants okay, was nothing short of astronomical. The value of designer clothes, cutting-edge tech accessories, and precious jewelry present, present in the dance hall was almost revolting. The bestial excitement permeating the air was almost palpable. Old rich people rave sounds fun. I was gonna say, like, Snobby bitches? Wow, so fun. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> the time of our lives. Ooh, that must be one of the worst thing ever. Dancing to the Macarena. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Okay. Staring at the mass of dancing humans in bewilderment, Sunny shook his head. What a strange ritual. <laughs> ritual. Nevis turned her head slightly and raised an eyebrow. I know, right? <laughs> the members of the court were occupying a large part of the VIP lounge intended for the most distinguished patrons of the club. Even among the mass of elites, their status was a cut above the rest. Kai and Cassie were enjoying something called champagne at the table, of course, while the other three moved to the edge to take a look at the main hall of the club. Changing Star peered at the dancing crowd and frowned. Their behavior doesn't make any sense. Sunny nodded in solidarity. Indeed. After a while, he added, They're not even dancing. They're just rhyth rhythmically gyrating their bodies. <laughs> It also appears that the proximity at which one is allowed to gyrate his or her body to other participants is representative of their desirability. Anyway, they all look incredibly stupid. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Just people rotating bodies. What the fuck? Stupid. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that he's wrong. Effie still lifted her head a little. It is not that simple, I think. I can't believe they're studying this. Like, this is amazing. This strange dynamic actually seems to be very nuanced. Just look at the women. They seem to be using their looks, physical coordination, and agility in order to attract the men. However, once the men are attracted, the women act as if they are disinterested. Most of the time, they truly are. Other times, it is just a signal for the men to try harder. 
I can't. Bro. Please. <laughs> she grew silent. And then added with slight confusion. The most startling part is that all of this information, including the complicated evaluations based on obscure parameters and much more, is communicated absolutely non-verbally and in a way that both men and women somehow seem to understand while chaotically jerking their bodies. <laughs> it is like they, are they all developed telepathic abilities. Trust me, not everyone understands. Sunny scowled. Anyway, these gyrations are clearly meant to illustrate one's high value as a romantic partner. And that is what this dance is. A venue, a venue for the dancers to seek out physically desirable partners. However, everyone acts as if it's not. In fact, most of these people are pretending that the exact opposite is true. Oh, okay, he rubbed his shin. As if showing interest is in itself an admission of in inadequacy and undesirability. Those who do manage to find partners do it through a series of obscure hints and silent signals. This is so inefficient. Why can't people just honestly state their goals and desires? They are all pursuing the same result anyway. Yeah? Sonny. Hmm? <laughs> Changing Star nodded thoughtfully. Effie, who was leaning on the railing near them, stared at the two of them with a perplexed expression. Then the hunter slowly shook her head. You are both idiots. You know that. Sonny and Ephes looked at her with surprise, their movement almost simultaneous. What? Why, is this analysis wrong? Ephes let out an ex exasperated sigh. They were just having fun. Gods, don't you know what fun is? Believe it or not, it's just pleasurable to let loose and move your body to loud music sometimes. Actually, you should try it. No. <laughs> A very similar expression of subdued revulsion appeared on both of their faces. No thank you. I'd rather not. The huntress rolled her eyes. As for that stuff about seeking partners, what's wrong with that? Other things can be pleasurable too, you know. Both Sunny and Nephis blinked. How frivolous, frivolous. I've never seen this word in my life. Of course I do. Don't I know it well? Effie groaned and grabbed her head. Hopeless. Both of them. After a few moments, she sighed and looked at Nephis and asked, Well, anyway, this is a perfect example of what humans like to do. Is it working? Do you feel better connected to humanity? Shishing Star hesitated, then looked back at the mass of dancing people and remained silent for a while. Then she said, It is strange to see so many people acting so carelessly. To be honest, all I can think about... Her face turned somber. Nevis lingered for a moment as she studied the crowd with a dark expression. Is how easy it would be to kill them all. <sighs> they were just so unaware and unprepared. Yes. After long years of living in a state of constant pain and struggle, desperately trying to survive and fighting harrowing enemies almost every day, it must have been hard for her to come to terms with this strange, peaceful reality. Nef might have returned to the waking world, but her mentality was slow to adjust. It was still in the dreadful grasp of the dream realm. Mentally, Changing Star was still living in a nightmare. Effie looked at her with a dubious frown. You would be surprised. This is an expansive cl expensive club, so a lot of these people are awakened. In fact, I'd say that places like these have a higher concentration of Awakened than pretty much anywhere else in the city, except for the Academy. This club is better suited to resist the Sudden Gate manifestation than the headquarters of most legacy clans. Neff glanced at her with surprise. Really? The Huntress grinned. Of course! Not all Awakened are obsessed with fighting like the two of you. They treat the Dream Realm as their job, not their whole existence. While they sleep, they perform their duties. Man the walls, fight the attacking nightmare creatures, maintain their citadels, and so on. When they wake up, they go about their actual lives. <laughs> like you should do, people! Chapter 792 Blind Spot 
Ooh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Evie smiled, then gestured at the dancing crowd and added, After they return from the dream realm, most awakened spend at least a part of their day training, training to raise their usefulness to the citadel and increase their chances of survival. Some have important jobs to perform in the waking world as well. Our, instructor, our infrastructure runs on spell tech, after all. She shook her head. But other than that, there's plenty of time to live and have fun. It doesn't have to be all work without stop. Some might even say that not having any other interests is detrimental. <laughs> the hunters looked at them and shrugged. I mean, how can you be motivated to fight for this world if you never experience all the nice things that it has to offer? Maybe that is why your counselor told you to participate in mundane human activities, Nev. Awakened and especially masters like us need to anchor ourselves to humanity somehow. But there's no gateways here. Sunny took a sniff of the strange sparkling liquid in his glass and carefully tasted it. This champagne, or whatever it was called, was way too expensive for him to pass the chance of getting his money's worth out of it. Well, it wasn't paying today, but still, it was a matter of principle. <laughs> Who is paying? Is it Effie? It seems like it. Of course, Sonny had sworn of alcohol, but with him being a master now, I, of course, Sonny had sworn off alcohol, but with him being a master now, there was no way for him to get drunk unless he wanted to. Not because of mundane drinks like this one anyway. Unless he cons consciously willed otherwise, his body was going to treat alcohol as a weak poison and resist it. Ooh, okay. Tastes sweet, but also bitter. Very refreshing, though. How strange. Effie's words made him thoughtful. She was not entirely wrong. Sunny himself felt a bit ambivalent about the waking world, which had not been kind to him in the past. He only liked it better than the dream realm because it was safer and had nice things, <laughs> like delicious food, comfortable, comfortable furniture, and network dramas. Also, Rain was here. But what if an awakened was indifferent to all those things? Would they even feel compelled to do anything to protect the waking world? What was going to stop them from abandoning the mundane com completely after they became a mas master or a saint? Or a sovereign? Nephis, meanwhile, continued to study... Th th huh? <laughs> yes, Nephis, meanwhile, continued to study the dance hall. After a while, she said, There might be many awakened here, but how prepared are they to fight against a flood of nightmare creatures? It takes a lot of courage to face an opening gate. Out of these who are courageous, out of those who are courageous, how many are competent enough to make a difference? Not everyone is like Mongrel. Very few can stand their ground and fight. Mongrel. Yes. Thank you so much, Tay. I will. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Effie gave her a strange look. Oh. Huh? Have you been watching a lot of videos on the network, Princess? The network, right? You're quoting Mongrel now? Shinji starts shrugged. I just find him admirable. Oh my god, is she gonna spill the beans? <laughs> the hunter suddenly grinned and said in a conspirational tone, Neff, do you maybe have a crush on Lord Mongrel? Ah! Suddenly almost spat out his champagne. He turned slightly and threw a murderous glance at Effie. <laughs> Neff is, however, remained nonchalant. She showed no reaction and simply said, I just appreciate his skill and his integrity. At first, I was merely attracted by how beautiful his swordsmanship is. <gasps> Flowing. Unpredictable. Supremely adaptable. I watched a few of his duels, as well as his performance in the Dream Tournament. His dedication, versatility, and domineering attitude left a deep impression on me. I can't die. Shaging Star shook her head. But those are just games. 
It was only when I stumbled on a clip of Mongrel single-handedly stalling several waves of nightmare creatures in front of a gate that I truly grew to appreciate his character. In my opinion, he is what a true Awakened should strive to be. Someone who is not resigned to bowing down to the spell, and is determined to resist it instead. His will, mastery of combat, and wisdom are commendable. It warms my heart to know that there are warriors like him out there. Oh my god. Sunny gripped his glass and forced out an awkward smile. Hey, let's not go overboard about that mongrel guy, shall we? He's not that great. I mean, he was not really alone at that gate. There were other awakened helping him. As for all that wisdom stuff, I'm willing to bet that he did not mean any of the crap he said. Nephis looked at him with surprise. I disagree. I think the mongrel deserves all that praise. He's truly remarkable. <laughs> Evie, meanwhile, was looking at them with a grin. Sunny suddenly got a bad feeling. Before he could say something, however, the huntress leaned forward and whispered into Neff's ear. <gasps> you do know that Sunny is mongrel, right? <laughs> Sunny choked on his champagne. The exquisite glass cracked slightly in his hand. Nephis froze. Her face remained still as ever. However, despite the dim lighting of the lighting of the nightclub, he could swear there was a hint of pink slowly appearing on her cheeks. Was she blushing? <laughs> Damn Effie, I'll kill her. <laughs> Effie, please. Oh yes. <laughs> Changing star remained silent for a while, then said in her usual even tone. Of course, I definitely knew that. She straightened her back and then added, I was just commenting on his perceived accomplishments. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to visit the restroom. <laughs> Do what? She glanced at Sonny and Effie with a deadpan expression, then turned around and walked away. Her pace was calm and steady. Not rushed at all. Effie waited for a few moments, then threw her head back and exploded in laughter. Oh god, don't make any sense. So inefficient. I can't with these two. Sonny glared at her with murderous in murder in his eyes. He remained silent for a few moments and said softly, Hey, Effie? She looked at him with a wide grin. What, Dovis? He sighed, then rolled it at his shoulders a few times. Do you have a will? <laughs> the hunters blinked a couple of times. Sure. I made one before the second nightmare. Why? Sunny looked at her and smiled politely. Oh, no reason. No reason at all. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Great fucking chapters. Like I I love Rip Effie. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Oh, I love this shit. Like, honestly, this is, uh, oh, this is one of the greatest things ever so far. I can't wait to read more of this. I need more cohort adventures in the real world. Quote unquote, the real world. I assume we won't have this for too long. Maybe they go to Antarctica, who fucking knows. But I am so fucking hyped right now. I am so in love with this novel, and I need to continue reading. That's all I want.